Sports Tammy with Real Southern Woman. Woo! I named this Bible study. I don't even know the date Bible study. We have been so crazy busy that I don't even know what the date is. And the bad thing about that is I actually paid my bills today. Actually, now that I remember paying some of my bills this morning, because I never got around to paying them all, it was January the 15th, I do believe. It has been the craziest day, and I sure do need Bible study. Let me just say this. When you missed that Bible study, now I read my Bible study last night, of course, before I went to bed, and I read tonight's too, which is really, it's a really good one. And, uh, but boy, do I need it. I have been so stressed out, and the, le the least time, the less time you spend with the Lord, the more stressed out you get. And, um. My friend's son joined the military, and Sunday I cooked for him. He wanted me to make chicken fingers and honey mustard, and he invited a few of his friends with him, and we had fun, and it was nice, and that was Sunday, but he left, and so his mother was really down today, and I wound up inviting her over um, and letting her spend some time here. And um, then May called and said her tire was going low for the second time. And that the guy told her that he thought it had a hole in it and that she needed to get it fixed. And me and Chris got in her car and was going to go have the tire plugged. And when we got down there and he took the tire off, we figured out that uh, she's run over something and bit the wheel of the doggone uh, tire. And so we had to call the Lincoln Ford place and order a new wheel. It's going to be $140 for that. Look, I put this on because I wanted on something comfortable. And this is the softest, biggest, nicest shirt. Don't you just love big shirts? Carolyn says, you look like Christmas with that green shirt on and the red pillows. <laughs> so after we left there and figured out she'd bent her rim on her tire, I spent 40 minutes on the phone this morning with my doctor's office because they sent me a bill for $1,200 because they drew May's blood and sent it to an out-of-network lab company. Is $1,200 not ridiculous? So that took forever. It's just been one of those days. So I told Chris, I said, take me to the nail salon and drop me off. And he did. And I got my nails done. done. You want to see them? They're so pretty. Yay! And uh, we got a pizza at Little Caesars. I met a neat woman in the nail salon. She is older than me. She looked like she was at least five years older than me. And... Um, she um, is a competition bodybuilder. <laughs> so I told her, I said, how interesting is that? I want you to be on my show. So I'm hoping she calls me, y'all, and I can get her on Color Valley Cooks because she eats more healthy and she can teach us a few things. Wouldn't that be interesting? So I'm hoping she calls me. Her mother's in memory care, so we had something in common, and uh, she actually has been thinking about making a YouTube channel, and I, showed, I told her she should, but hers would be something totally different. But anyway, I think that's neat. Um, I hope y'all are having a good evening. I know we're supposed to be talking about the Bible, but I thought I'd get a few things off my chest first. Lord, has it been a wild day. Um... I haven't got anything. I never even finished paying my bills. My goal this morning was to clean my closet because I haven't cleaned it up since before Christmas and pay my bills. I did get my closet cleaned out, but I didn't get finished paying my bills today because I invited my friend Ellen over and we had wings because she needed me today and I thought that was the right thing to do. So I'm going to finish paying bills when we get finished with Bible study tonight. Um, 
I'm just happy anyway, and I'm happy that I have you girls to talk to. And guys, I got a couple of guys that watch faithfully. I'm just happy that y'all are here for me. I want to have a bad day. God is here, and y'all are here, and we get to see each other. I like these evening Bible studies better. Let me know if you do. If you do, I might just start doing them in the evenings. Because the good thing about it is I have, I have time to cook, clean up everything, and I'm relaxed, and it ends my crazy day. And let me know. Just let me know your thoughts on that one. Tonight, it is a really good thing, and that is in our book, uh, Jesus, Our Perfect Hope. And I have noticed that a couple more of you bought books, I do believe. Woo! And it's uh, by Charles Stanley. And we are going to read today's reading. And it's a really good one. Like I said, I've said that like three times. But it is. Okay, some to think about on a day like today. Today has been a day like a Monday for me. Oh, and let me tell y'all this. Thursday, we are going to uh, Macon. We're going down to Mercer. And Maya's going to tour the school. And we're going down with her. So if I, when I do Bible study, I may actually do it in the car on the way home from there. Um, but if for some reason I'm not on here Thursday, you know we've had a long day and I'm exhausted in the car. If not, then I will do it in the car on the way home. That is, if the Wi-Fi works good. Okay, today we're, so remember that, Thursday, May has Mercer tour in the school, and it's going to be raining a little bit, so pray for our traveling mercies, and um, I'm hoping that um, we get to walk around and see good, uh, quite a few things there. This says, be in awe, January the 15th, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, lofty and exalted. This is out of Isaiah 6. Verse 1, and Isaiah, you know, is a prophetic book, so it's very deep and sometimes way over my head, but it's still fun to read, no matter what the book is. Um, so we're going to pick up, and we're going to read this for a minute, and then we're going to read what Charles Stanley has to say. So if you want to go to Isaiah chapter 6, you can read with me. That'd be good, because you know what? Wisdom comes from the Word of God. So, we need all the wisdom we can get, don't we? Maybe that's why older people are wiser. Because when you get older, you settle down more. Listening to the Word of God doesn't seem so scary to you. And maybe that's one reason older people are wiser, because... They're not afraid, and they're not ashamed to say. I remember when I was young, I was a Christian, but I was kind of ashamed. And I know it's terrible, but it's true. Like, if I was listening to Christian music, sometimes I would roll my window up so the person next to me couldn't hear it because I was afraid of what they might think. Isn't that stupid? Or, you know, you're just not like you are when you're older. When you're, when you're older... You don't mind shouting his name to the rooftops. But when you're younger, you're worried about what somebody might think of you. And if some of y'all are still old and worried about what other people think, then uh, that's really strange. Because most of the time when you get old, you don't care anymore as much. And you are wiser. And maybe we're wiser because we do like to, to listen to the Lord and read the book. <sighs> and if we don't like to listen to the Lord and read the book, then we just think we're wiser. We're really not. Isaiah chapter 6, it says, The holy and glorious God is the chapter name in my book because I have a King James Version study Bible. I love it. If you want to see it, it looks like it's hardback. They're cheaper when you buy them in a hardback version. So I get the study Bible in hardback. That way I don't have to pay as much. I get large print, though. Um, It says, In the year that King... Isaiah, Isaiah, in the year that King Isaiah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims, 
each one had six wings. With twain, he covered his face. And with twain, he covered his feet. And with twain, he did fly. Now this is a cherubim, I mean a seraphim. So this is an angel and it has six wings. And what, you know, we talked about angels a long time ago and how angels are nothing like what we think they are. But this one had two wings that covered his face, two that covered his feet, and two that covered his, two that actually he flew with. It says, and one cried unto another and said, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the posts of the door moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. Now, this is number five. This is verse five in chapter six, and this is titled, God Cleanses Isaiah. It says, Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips, for mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one, oh, then flew one of the seraphims unto me. This is an angel flying to Isaiah having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongs from off the altar. And he laid it upon my mouth, and he said, Lo, this hath touched thy lips, and thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sin purged. It's pretty wild, isn't it? So an angel flies over to him, has a piece of coal in his hand that he's taken off, of the altar that it says he used tongs to take it off the altar with. And he puts it up on Isaiah's lips and tells him that his iniquity has been taken away. And then it says, Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then said I, Here I am, send me. And he said, Go, and tell this people, Hear ye indeed, but understand not, and see you indeed, but perceive not. Make the heart of this people fat, make their ears heavy, and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and convert and be healed. Then said I, Lord, how long? And he said, until the cities be wasted without inhabitant, and the houses without man, and the land be utterly desolate. And the Lord have removed men far away, and there be a great forsaking in the midst of the land. But yet in it shall be a tenth, and it shall return, and shall be eaten as a tail tree, and as an oak whose substance is in them, when they cast their leaves, so the holy seed shall be the sustenance thereof. Now, Isaiah, a prophet. This is a book in the Bible that's talking about the future. Um, he's also talking about seeing angels and the angels being with him. Now, this is deep and, and it's hard to understand. So I'm going to read to you. the. This is a study Bible. So on the bottom of this, it tells you kind of a summary of what it means. So I'm going to read it to you, and then we're going to read our Bible study, because our Bible study is just talking about holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. And I was just thinking when it said this, it says, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory, okay? And I was actually thinking in my mind, the earth here, you know, um, the king of the earth or the, the world is the devil. And I was thinking, how nice will it be when the Lord is? That's all we see, and it's full of his glory. And it really is like this where we can say, holy, holy, holy. 
it's just going to be really nice. But let's read what this has to say. I haven't read it yet, so let's read it together. It says, Isaiah's confession, having seen God in the full glory of his holiness, Isaiah pronounces the prophetic woe upon himself. I've got my dog on speaker upside down. I guess as loud as I am, y'all can hear me. Um, it says, Isaiah pronounces the prophetic woe upon himself. This was the legal charge meaning ruined or dead. He self, his self-evaluation was, I am undone. Um, it says from Hebrew, dama, meaning to be dumb or silent. This, his response, was a statement of total self-condemnation. I am dead. I am speechless. Recognizing that he has no legitimate excuse for himself, he further realizes that he is unclean, which means tame, defiled, or polluted. This self-evaluation is made in light of the fact that he has seen the King, the Lord of hosts. The heavenly King is identified as Yahweh himself, who is called Lord of hosts 62 times in Isaiah and 261 times throughout the Old Testament. Isaiah's consecration. Isaiah's confession of his personal sin brought the response of God's cleansing to equip him for service to the Lord. The altar was the place of blood sacrifice called by later rabbinic writers the parasolite or place of exp expiation or intercession. The coal has no redemptive ability of its own, but is symbolic in the efficiency of the burnt offering consumed on the altar. Thus, Isaiah's sin was purged or cleansed. Isaiah's call was in verse 8, and it says, It states that he heard the voice of the Lord asking whom he should send and who will go for us. The plural pronouns are used here as in Genesis 1.26 to refer to the tr uh, triune God. The prophet himself is now a changed man. Having his burden of guilt and worry removed, he spontaneously volunteers. Here I am. Send me. His consecration by God prepared him to answer God's call to service. Isaiah's response, here am I, is one word in Hebrew, ha'ini. It also appears in the Hebrew text 58, 9, when God responds to, who's, to those who call on him and say, here I am. Thus, Isaiah connects his response to God's call in the first part of his book, to God's response to his call in the second part of the book, emphasizing the unity of the book's authorship. It says Isaiah's commission were verses 9 through 13 that we read, and it says that God warns Isaiah that his ministry, for the most part, will fall upon deaf ears. The syntax of the sentence indicates that hear ye indeed means keep on hearing. Thus, Judah will continue hearing, but not heeding the prophet's warning. Make the heart fat, ears heavy, shut their eyes indicates that the more he preaches, the more the people will harden themselves and to his message until the Babylonian captivity, after which only a tenth shall return. So um, that explains chapter 6. If you don't have a study Bible, they're wonderful. And I recommend you getting one. Because when you read chapters and books like Isaiah, when you're talking about a prophet, they, it is written, most of the Bible I can understand pretty, pretty easily with the Holy Spirit that's living inside me that helps me know what I'm reading. But I will say when you're reading books like Isaiah, which is a prophetic book, it's a lot harder. So study Bibles are wonderful. They're wonderful anyway. Um, and you can buy these online for nearly nothing, especially if you go. I, my favorite 
Bible, uh, place to buy Bibles is ChristianBooks.com. And this is the King James Study Bible, second edition, hardback, and uh, they really have good deals on them when they're hardback. And that's all you need when you're at home is a hardback to read. They're really nice. So let's go back and see what Charles Stanley has to say. Charles Stanley says, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, lofty and exalted. Now, I'm sure this is a different version because the KJV version says, let me flip over there. In the year. Now listen to the difference. He says, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, lofty and exalted. Okay? And this one, it says, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, hind lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Okay? And, and maybe he just put a portion of the verse on here. Um, it says, have you embraced the wonder and majesty of the living God? In your heart, is he the great I am? Do you recognize all powerful Lord of creation is near to you and aware of your every need? Does a sense of worship characterize your relationship with him? Scripture instructs that we should fear the Lord. Deuteronomy 6.24 10, 12, and 20, and then Joshua 24, 14, and etc. Talks about fear in the Lord. But don't mistake that to mean God, but don't mistake that to mean that God wants you to be so afraid of him that you avoid approaching him. Rather, his desire is that you should stand in awe of his wondrous power and ability. So you will be confident in his loving help in time of need. With this in mind, imagine God lifted up, exalted with all of creation at his footstool. Picture him easily coordinating the workings of the universe with his unfathomable wisdom and might. Then remember that his desire is for you to know him and be known by him. Worship, love, and honor him, recognizing that every creature that exists, he has singled, no, wait a minute. It says, worship, love, and honor him, recognizing that of every creature that exists, he has singled you out as his own to love and he will never leave you or forsake you. It says, Lord, I do not deserve you, but how grateful I am for your loving kindness. To you be all honor and glory forever. Amen. My hope is in Jesus because he is sovereign over all creation. So he's just letting us know that God is the great I am. And um, now he just pulled that first verse out to talk about how great God is the great I am. I read the whole chapter to you because I like to kind of get in perspective what I'm looking at. But what happened to Isaiah here was that he saw God, really saw God. And when he saw God, he recognized who he was, and especially in comparison to God. And then he felt very inadequate and guilty, and he could see his sin, and he knew that he wasn't worthy when he saw how glorious God was. And I believe um, that when we get to heaven, we'll be able to see that beauty, that perfection, that glory, and we will be in such awe that we'll be like the angels 
and we'll all be looking up to God and we'll be saying holy 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 is the Lord God Almighty because we will be in such awe most people who saw God in the Bible were that way just like Paul on the road to Damascus when he saw Jesus and he appeared in the bright light Paul fell at his knees and worshiped and Paul was the same guy who was killing people and persecuting people but he went from that guy to on his knees and in total worship and this is kind of what happened with Isaiah here he's going to total worship and so the angel takes the stone off the altar because the altar was the place of sacrifice according to our study Bible touches his lips and tells him he's clean so they're preparing Isaiah for his ministry and Isaiah was a prophet uh, proclaiming the Word of God and a lot of people didn't listen to him I'm happy tonight that y'all are listening that y'all tune in love the Lord enough to care um, I hope and pray that all of you can see that he is a true God he is perfect we should fear him for he is so much above us I pray that we can all see where we stand compared to where he really is who we really are and uh, give him all the glory in our life and with that said keep in mind just as Charles Stanley has said here do you recognize that the all-powerful Lord of creation is near to you and aware of your every need does a sense of worship characterize your relationship with him I pray that we would know that the same God who created the universe the same God that is over the whole entire universe still cares and loves us as individuals and longs for our relationship and our love and our worship and I pray that we will all give him that this year of 2019 that we'll all take out the time to think about him and know that without him we couldn't be breathing we couldn't have the blessings that we have in this life and we wouldn't we wouldn't be who we are without him so I pray that we all give him the glory um, I hope tonight's Bible lesson that um, y'all are blessed by it and I hope to see you guys tomorrow if you guys do like the evening studies I may just start doing them in the evening it's really easy for me uh, because mornings there's always something going on something comes up you know I have people call the phones always ringing in the morning uh, you know people where mama lives the kids Chris I mean there's so many things to do so I think evening would be great um, tomorrow is January the 16th we will be doing uh, Romans chapter 8 um, it says overcome is the name of it if you want to read Romans chapter 8 before we meet then we will read that and I will give you the summary just like I did tonight out of the study Bible so if you want to read Romans chapter 8 and kind of get your feel of how you feel you know what the meaning of it is and then tomorrow night you'll find out what it has to say um, or what we have to say and what Charles Stanley gets out of that passage so uh, we will see you tomorrow and talk about Romans chapter 8 uh, tomorrow wait a minute tomorrow night is Wednesday night yeah I can meet at 630 tomorrow night because our church don't meet until 730 if you have church on Wednesday night and you're going to be gone then just you know watch it when you get home but ours actually meets later um, I hope you'll have a wonderful evening and uh, maybe tomorrow I won't talk so much and we can read and Black Abyss book because it's really good too. Um, hey Mary, she says she's here late. We just rewatch it, Mary. Um, let's say our prayers and um, I hope y'all have a blessed evening. I'm not sure what me and Chris have planned, but I am paying the bills before we watch a movie or do anything like that. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you and praise you for being our holy, holy, holy God. For being on the throne high and lifted up for being a God who cares about his people who cares about his people so much and wants a relationship with us so much 
that because Adam and Eve ruined that tie that we had that direct relationship with you and throughout time you gave us the law to see what sin was but you still knew that, the, that we didn't have a direct path to you we had to uh sacrifice they well the jews sacrifice lambs and bullocks and, i mean not uh not bullocks but lambs and things on the altar so that they could be forgiven of their sins but you lord cared about us so much and you were more interested in our hearts than what we could do to be holy for you knew there was absolutely nothing we could do to be righteous and you gave your son as that ultimate sacrifice and now we have a direct path that we can pray to you and have a relationship with you it's just unbelievable that only you could really understand it because it is a spiritual thing and I thank you on behalf of everyone who's listening and the Christians here and the church that you provided a way for us to have a special relationship to give us joy in our hearts and peace and love here on this earth uh, just be with us tonight. Help us be witnesses. For that's what matters to you the most. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Love y'all. Love y'all.